hey love bugs what's up so coming at you guys with another video this will be more so on spiritual topics um, and today's spiritual topic we are going to touch on a little bit in reference to what divine masculine and divine feminine energy is or we can call it masculine energy and feminine energy um so we'll yeah get on get into that topic um what i'll be kind of going over is first of all what is it what are these energies um how do they play a role in our everyday lives um even the traits of both energies that we have within us um how do they play a role in our relationships etc and then how to balance them all right so <clears throat> Again, if you are a returning subscriber of mine, I welcome you back. If you are new here, then I welcome you. All right, so first things first, um, to dig in, what is masculine and feminine energy? Um, both energies are two spiritual energies, feminine and masculine, known as yin and yang. These spiritual forces play a big role in our everyday lives, affecting your mute, your mood, romantic relationships, and overall your wellness. So feminine energy is fluid and it controls your creative abilities, your intuitive abilities, and your ability to be empathic um, because you are empathic by nature. Um, feminine energy is mostly about being. Masculine energy is logical and governs your rational abilities. Uh, it's focused and it's anal analytical on thoughts. Um, it's pretty much about doing, about just doing instead of thinking on it. Whereas feminine energy is mostly in tune with your emotions. It's, it's more about being in the present of your emotions, understanding your emotions, etc. Um, being able to tap into them uh, as well. These uh, energies are polarities and symbols for spiritual forces in you. They are not related to biological gender or stereotypes. So again, when we think about masculine and feminine energy, I think the miscon misconception, I don't know why I can't get my words together. I feel like often people correlate um or like, like they reference masculine energy to being a man like automatically because it's that name it, it it goes to okay well you have to be manly for you to have masculine energy when in fact that's the furthest thing from the truth then when we think about feminine energy we think about a woman but the truth of the matter is, we have both in us. Like, no matter how you try to slice the pie, we do. The problem is where there's an imbalance, where, where one energy is more dominant than the other, it overpowers the other energy that we have in us. So let's say if you are a female and you operate mostly out of your masculine energy, you're more than likely not able to tap into your emotions. And if you do, your pride gets in, into the way. Like your ego gets in, into the way. Like you suppress your emotions instead of feeling your emotions and allowing your emotions to come to the surface. Again, if you are a male energy, it could be vice versa. Again, it's not gender based. So when you think of masculine and feminine energy, Keep in mind that you have both in you. One of your energies might just be more powerful than the other one because there is an imbalance. When you bring both of the energies into balance, right, that's where you know when to be um, logical. You know when to set goals and actually go after those goals. So you're tapping more into your masculine energy. Then if there's a situation where you need to show emotion or you need to be vulnerable or you need to be um, show some sort of empathy to others, you know how to tap into those emotions. You're emotionally intelligent. 
that's you being in your feminine energy. So you know how to piggyback off of each. Like you know how to go from one to the other. And you understand when you're in one of the energies and when you're not. So that's the difference. All right, so moving forward. Next thing um, we're going to discuss is masculine energy. The masculine energy, better known as yang, this energy is external, stable, predictable, logical, focused. To tap into your masculine energy, you must take risk, set goals, as I stated earlier, because it's mostly about doing, and stand up for yourself. But um, you are also urged to be careful when you're in this energy. Um, if there is an unbalance, as I stated before, meaning there's too much masculine energy overpowering your feminine, it can make you do the following. You may feel more aggressive, more confrontational, and more competitive. You may show more competitive behavior. All right, so the masculine energy traits, bear with me. I wrote all of them down. Okay. The masculine energy traits are as follow. Um, it's analytical, individualistic, projective, focused, goal-oriented, driven, assertiveness, confidence. There's probably more traits, but I didn't really feel like <laughs> I didn't really feel like writing everything down <laughs> with that. But what I'll do is I'll put the um, in the description box which links, like which websites you guys can go to to better read up and research on this. Because again, there's more traits to the masculine energy. I just wrote down a few. Um, you're also more rational when you're in your masculine energy. You're more likely to take action rather than thinking on something um, you'll just kind of do. Again, it is about doing so that's the masculine energy. Uh, it is also structured uh, while feminine energy isn't. Okay, so. Bear with me. I wrote a lot of shit down. <laughs> okay, so feminine energy. I'm going to talk about that one. And then we'll talk about how to balance them. Okay. So the feminine energy, better known as yin, it embodies the unknown, the internal emotions that are within us. It is unpredictable, intuitive, caring, and heart-oriented, vulnerable, receptive, fluid, this energy can be cultivated by meditation, um, even dancing, creating, sharing your feelings, or spreading, um, spending time, sorry, <laughs> spending time in nature. Um, if the feminine energy is unbalanced, you may feel the following. You may feel powerless or oversensitive. Um, bear with me. I wrote down. There's many other traits too to the feminine energy if there's an imbalance. I'm trying to see where I wrote the crap down. Also, I mean, those two that I wrote down, I don't know where I put my other notes. <laughs> Anyway, um, so yeah, if the feminine energy is unbalanced, right, you're more likely not to be in tune with your own emotions. In so many words, like you're, you may be a person that will suppress your emotions and whenever it's time to talk about your emotions, your ego gets in a way and you feel like you don't need to talk about your emotions. You you're more you're more receptive to suppress them instead of talking about them and being in tune with them. 
you also may come across very aggressive. You may come across very confrontational. And when someone tries to tell you something, you may be closed off to other people's perspective because you are in your masculine energy more rather than your feminine. You might not be too in tune with being nurturing, like your nurture side, um, where, you know, someone may need your nurturing energy and you may be a person, if your feminine energy is unbalanced, you may not know how to tap into that because you're suppressing it. You know, you don't, you haven't allowed yourself to identify with your emotions and feel those emotions and allow yourself to feel those emotions. So when it's time to be vulnerable to them, you're likely to run away from them, if that makes sense. So that right there, I hope that I broke that down and to where like you guys can understand that um, and it's just not confusing. But yeah, um, I feel like women as nurturers, like as people that are by nature empathic and loving and caring, um, I feel, especially in today's society, a lot of women are running around and have forgotten um, that they have that energy within them. They've forgotten how to be vulnerable to a certain extent and how to be in tune with their emotions. Hence why I feel there's a lot of imbalance between masculine and feminine, between men and women. I feel like, on the other hand, I feel like a lot of men are running around with so much masculine energy, they have forgotten how to tap into their emotions. And I feel like, to piggyback off of that, I feel like a lot of a lot of those uh, men, not not all men, and when I say women, not all women, so don't misunderstand <laughs> how I'm wording this. I'm trying to make sure I work this a certain way. Um, I feel like men too, you know, they're running around and they have forgotten, you know what it means to be in tune with your emotions, what it means to show emotion and that showing your emotions is not a sign of weakness. It's embodying literally who the fuck you are. And, and by you suppressing those emotions, you you're hiding half of yourself. You might as well say like it's very crazy out here in terms of how people operate. But I feel like a lot of that has to do with our childhood, you know, the, the uh, principles and values that we were raised, upon, raised on. Um, a lot of our choices that we make as adults stem from childhood. It stems from how we were taught to be. You know, we, we were not taught to choose our own path. We were not, even some men, if we're going to get back to men, a lot of men were not taught to show emotion they were told that if you hey if you show emotion you know you're weak you're a girl it's uh um, that's frowned upon you know in our home you you better not um if you fall down and you scrape your knee your ass better not cry like right there in most in most men it, you know if we're talking about the individuals that don't know how to show emotion that don't know how to tap into their emotion or are afraid to tap into their emotion based upon what society will think of them because there's a lot of those, those men running around there's a lot of those females running around that operate like that and it's not and it's not no one's fault like I don't even blame the person I feel I feel what we went through as children that that is not our fault but what you choose to, to do as an adult, how you choose to respond as an adult to situations or people, that is your responsibility. That is your fault. In my opinion, because you have, there's so much knowledge out here that you can drown yourself in. Like you, you, you can seek knowledge to enlighten yourself on these topics and... 
a lot of people choose not to do that. And I feel like a lot of people choose not to do that because it's based upon their ego and their pride. The ego gets in the way, and once that gets in the way, you can forget it. You know, the ego takes over. The ego is in the driver's seat. That's how most of these relationships are. That's most. That's mostly how these marriages are. People get married for the wrong goddamn reason, or people get married and have all these expectations that are unrealistic. You know, I could go on and on and on. And I feel like there's definitely an imbalance between masculine and feminine energies um, within people. And that's where we have this whole power struggle. You know, one is trying to prove how powerful the other isn't. Like, there's this constant pull for, for power to prove something to the other person. Like, to prove dominance. And it's, to me, if you really ask me how I feel towards that, it's absolutely stupid. It's the most stupid and ridiculous shit I've ever fucking heard in my life. I'm sorry. Sorry, not sorry. I feel like it's absolutely retarded. <laughs> That's why I feel like sometimes I wish I was born in another era. You know, another time, another generation other than this one. Like, it's the most stupidest shit I've ever fucking heard in my life. And a lot of it has to do with suppressing one of the energies where the other one is more powerful than the other one. There's all this imbalance in each of us. And if you don't understand what the imbalance is, if you don't know how to recognize the um, imbalance between your feminine and masculine energy that you have in you, then there's no way that to know that you have an issue. Like, even if someone sat you down and told you, you know, you wouldn't know if you had an issue if, you, if you're not, you know, even open to it as well. Like, a lot of people ain't open to this because, again, it's ego and pride. It has nothing to do with shit else but their ego and pride. And I feel like if a lot of people, for a moment, pushed aside the ego and the pride, like, let's... Let's take that off the table for a minute. Let's remember what it's like to be a human being. We're not basing this on gender. And if for a moment people were more receptive to receiving information like this and understanding, okay, when I'm doing this, I'm in my masculine. When I'm doing, when I'm reacting like this, I'm in my feminine. Like if people took the time to really be receptive to this. I feel like a lot of marriages would not end in, in, in divorce. I feel like a lot of relationships would be more healthier. But, unfortunately, that's not the case these days. So, anyway, let's get back to subject. So, yeah, if you um, are imbalanced in your feminine energy, you are... Um, more than likely to lack confidence. You are more than likely to be um, codependent. This goes for male or female. Because again, when when talking about masculine and feminine energy, this is not gender-based. We're not talking about man or female. We are talking about energy and the traits that we carry within those energies. That's basically what this is. <laughs> if I could sum it up, it's not, you know... It's not basing it upon whether you're a man or female. Um, you know, we we all have yin and yang in us, light and dark. You know, so yeah, if you are imbalanced in your feminine energy, uh, more than likely you will be very confrontational. Um, you will not know what it means to. Like, if you're wrong about a situation, this goes for male or female. If you're wrong about a situation, you're more than likely to not apologize in that situation. You're Like, you're not going to recognize that you are wrong. You might know that you're wrong in the back of your mind, but your, but your ego that tells you that you're not wrong, that will take precedence 
over everything else. And instead of you tapping into your emotions and saying, you know what, what I said or what I did was wrong, let me go ahead and, and pull my partner aside or let me go ahead and pull my friend aside or this person aside and apologize. Instead of you doing that, you are going to shy away from that and, you know, be in total denial. That's you not, that's, that's you lacking your feminine energy. That's you not tapping into your feminine energy for, for that moment and saying, hey, I'm sorry. How can I fix this? And actually producing change behavior. Like, that's just an example. But let's talk about how next it affects our relationships if there's an imbalance. So, for instance, if two masculine energies that are unbalanced, of course, if they get together, which again, if we're talking about masculine, this could be a man and a woman. This could be a woman and a woman. This could be a man and a man. Masculine and feminine, again, is not gender-based. I want to <laughs> I want to say that one more time. Um, if two masculine energies get together and they are unbalanced, there could be a lot of fights there could be a lot of aggressive behavior. So again, it just stems me back to my point. If you are imbalanced in your masculine energies um, and you are male or female, when you're wrong about something, you're gonna, it's gonna be very hard for you to be vulnerable enough and push your pride and your ego aside and say, you know what, I am sorry. What I did and what I said was total bullshit. And I'm, I'm, I'm taking full accountability. Like, it'll be hard for you to even take accountability. And then the constant fights, it will be a situation where maybe your partner is right about something. But because you're, because you're wanting to prove how right you are, even though you know you're wrong, it'll be this constant struggle between you and your partner. And instead of you admitting that you're wrong about something and fixing it and changing it, you will go against them. You'll go against the grain. You're like, you'll, you will be in total denial and make them feel like they're wrong. Like you'll reverse psychology. You'll throw that in there. Like that's, that's where you're, that's where you're unbalanced in your masculine energy. Um, in, in that setting, because you know you're wrong, you're not thinking from a logical sense. You're more so thinking from an emotional standpoint. And if we're talking emotions, you could be operating in your feminine energy, but an imbalanced feminine um, energy. Like your energy in that trait would be unbalanced. That's where the fights and the ag aggressive behavior would come from. So, for instance, if two feminine energies got together that are unbalanced, of course, there will be a stagnant energy. Um, this could mean they're slow to be uh, motivated to actually do things. When they set goals, they don't finish them. Um, and then... It'll also be due to a lack of assertiveness, um, but also a lack of confidence. I mean, I can go on and on about the traits of unbalanced feminine energy. Um, that will create a problem in the relationship as well, because maybe your partner is more, more uh, goal-oriented and you know, maybe there's a goal that you got, you both are trying to get to, and they're putting in their effort, but you're not. And then instead of you analyzing that and understanding that, you're more receptive. You're like you. You're likely to make an excuse as to why you haven't came up with your half, or as to why you're you're not setting your goals and actually doing them. And that'll create a lot of stagnant energy in your life, just in, just you personally, but also in a relationship. Um, you'll lack 
the ability to be to show your partner the nurturing and loving side of you. Why? Because your feminine energy is suppressed. You're not allowing that to come to to the surface. You're not um, recognizing your that that part of you is unbalanced. You know. Um, so therefore, your your relationship will, will lack that in itself. It'll lack you know you being able to show your partner the love and care that they need or that they desire rather um instead you you will be more likely to be aggressive um you'll have this constant need to try to prove something to them um and again you'll lack accountability you know if your partner comes to you especially if if you have a um an imbalanced feminine energy within you, if your partner comes to you and there's something bothering them and they want to, you know, express their emotions, you're likely a person to brush them off, you know, and say, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to hear about this right now, or, um, you aggy, like, you too aggravating, like, or it ain't that deep, suck it up, like, that will be, that will be your response, which is a very cold response. But, again, it stems from the Im imbalanced energy of your feminine aspect that's in you. So, what can you do to bring balance, right? What can we do to bring balance to both of our energies? Well, I wrote down a, a couple of pinpoints. Um, there's probably more. There's more um, ideas, especially if you... Um, do research online, like you can definitely um, look into a lot of these ideas. A lot of, um, like one of the ideas that I have on here, there's many meditation methods on YouTube. I'll even try to put in the description box um, which meditations I have done or what might be helpful to kind of get you started. But the, the number one I think there's like, uh, there's like seven that I wrote down. <laughs> I had to look at it real quick. All right. So number one, um, you can bring balance to both of the, um, uh, energies by meditation, practicing affirmations to yourself and daily mantras. Number two, you can, you can focus more inward. Um, within yourself to become balanced and uh, balance both energies and also be aware of what thoughts come and go to awaken your creativity, which is your feminine, um, or to awaken also your masculine. And then number three, you can also try journaling, um, write down your thoughts, uh, make a to-do list, uh, set, set goals, that's number four. Um, also, number five is spend time in nature. Um, in nature, not only can you become grounded in your energy, things become more clear. Um, things like being in, in nature and in that energy, it can bring a lot of peace to you as well. And you gain a lot of clarity in it. In, in that um in that atmosphere and so um it can also bring you happiness which is raising your vibrations and like i said it can reduce stress so if you have a moment you can take a walk um you can actually just go outside and <laughs> stand in the grass i know it sounds a little weird but you're still connecting to mother earth gaia if you will um so yeah that's number five. Number six is you can connect with loved ones, friends, uh, people that is people that are good for your energy. Don't connect with just <laughs> with just everybody or people that like aggravate you or that's not going to get you in a high vibrational state um, or that's like filled with drama. Don't connect with those type of people. I'm talking about the the loved ones that 
you know, they could be friends, they could be co-workers, that maybe y'all are friends, they could be some family members or family in general, um, if it's going to bring you a good positive vibe, then, you know, connect with those individuals. And not last but not least, number seven, practice self-care. Um, this goes for men and women. And the reason why I say that is because whether you're a man or female, when you practice self-care and self-love, um, you are tapping again into your feminine energy. You know, you are recognizing, okay, I need to do something to um, boost my mood. I need to put more love into myself. Let me do this. Let me go and do X, Y, Z. Um, that's pouring love back into yourself. And that's, that's tapping into that feminine energy again. So I hope that those seven tips helped. Um, I tried to break this down as much as possible. I did a lot of notes. 